today from the Emmanuel TV family. The journey continues. The vision remains the same. Changing lives, changing nations, changing the world. Man of God, please, sir. I'm addicted to drugs, sir. I take drugs, sir. Please, sir. I'm, I'm addicted to drug. I take drug for the past 15 years. Man of God, help me. Help me. I take cocaine, please. It has destroyed my marriage life. Even my promotion in my office. I've, be, I've, I've had a problem for a very long time, sir. Please, sir. Have mercy on me. Let your mercy People of God, Emmanuel, this is my son beside me, and this is my wife, and this is my father, and my name is Akugwe Kennedy. I'm from Edo State, Benin, from Nigeria. I'm a member of NURTW, that is National Union of Road Transport Workers. I'm a Deputy State Task Force Chairman, I'm CA Branch Chairman. I'm addicted into drugs for the past 22 years. I smoke cocaine, of which it have caused a lot of damage in my life. I spent at least not less than 400 million during this cocaine period. I've been living bad life for a very long time. I'm a boxer. I box for FCT Amateur Boxing Association, and I'll turn to professional boxing before I started taking drugs. And it is because of this drug issue that I've never forward my career. So when I start taking this drug, people now realize, because if I want to fight people, I don't fight one, two people. If you are not up to 3, 4, 5, 10, I will not fight you people. So by the time they now see that it's like, this guy, maybe they saw something in me, I can't say. I now started doing anyhow. If I take that drug, I will just be beating people. I forget about my career. I couldn't forward my career. Okay, so you dropped your career as a professional boxer and started beating up people on the streets, fighting on the streets, is that right? Yes, sir. So because of that, how, how, who were you known to be on the streets? Who were the type of people that began to come around you? I'm the king of the touts, dear. All the touts in F-City. In short, if you don't even know myself, maybe you are a stranger, because as a transporter, all the transporter all over the FCT, I'm their king of boys. I have a lot of boys, more than thousands of boys, of which anywhere we are going to, they may come and call us now that, okay, we should go to Iyanokwaja or we should go to Oshodi to go and pursue the garage people there. We will go to the terminal, we will chase everybody off, we will cut people, machete them, of which have caused damages to many lives. So I now realize... Okay, so, so you mean to say, brother, that in FCT Abuja, the, the capital of Nigeria, you are the, the commander of all of the thugs, the, the, the boys who are on the streets there selling drugs, the criminals there, you are the one that they look at as a leader. Yes, yes, sir. All the bad, bad boys in FCT, the boys that they are selling drugs, all the criminals, all of them. It's not that maybe I'm a criminal, I'm not a criminal, it's just because... I'm a fighter, and anywhere, if they say we are going, they always followed, followed me, and everybody is scared of me. They are scared of me, so that's why I'm a king of boys here. By then, I'm a branch treasurer, and they know that I'm a fighter, so they will now come and meet me. If any of my colleagues, they chase him off in his office, they will now come and call me that, okay, we should go and assist them, and if he wants to assist them, we'll go to the higher authority. We will do the normal processing that we're supposed to do, so they will back us up, I will arrange my boys, we went here, we would chase everybody off and take over their offices. I would put anybody that I like that, okay, you, are, you will be the branch chairman, you will be the unit chairman. That is how we share the position for them. Anytime I take that drug, in short, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't even know what I'm doing. It, of course, set back to me to the extent that even in my working place, my promotion for the past four and a half years, it was set back. Even my married life also, I've never, after having one issue, because of the drugs that I'm taking, there was a time I went to Abalis, 
because a lot of people normally comes to me they will say this kind of job that you are doing is not something you take ordinary eyes to do you have to go and fortify yourself to arrange yourself get prepared in case of anything and i've been to so many places that i will just go and do charm they will give me some things to eat to drink to bath i will do charm of gone charm of vanish charm of a matchet. Even the day that they even give me the charm of vanish, gone, everything. That very day, not up to two hours. That is how some policemen now came for Mopo. They now came. So when they came, because of that charm that is on me, it was giving me confidence, boldness. I just told them that, ah, Mr. Ma, if you are looking for someone, can't you go and look, look for them for somewhere else? Am I the one that you are looking for? That is how one among them. I said, get this man arrested. I said, get who arrested? You get me arrested. That is how they now started cocking their gun. When they was cocking their gun, and I jacked one among them. When I jacked one among them, I was using that one to guide myself, left and right, front and back. That is, and I pushed him away. We are pushing away, and now there are some people, all this mall and they normally sell provision. That they sell provision, and they put shade on top of their provision. And I took this, that shade, like four, five shade. If I took this one, I would break it with cash fire, took this one, break it, cash fire. That is, and I escaped myself. They now started releasing direct bullets. More than 40 something bullet that day, they sprayed the bullet on my body because that gun was cartridge. That is how and I escaped. So, because of the charm you had done, uh, a charm against guns entering your body, even when they sprayed you with 40 bullets, you mean the guns did not actually enter your body? Yes, yeah, 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 sir. Because of the charm that I ate that very day, the, the, the bullet couldn't enter, penetrate into my body. So, that is how and I now escaped. When I escaped, later on, Later on, the problem was just more and more and more and more. And I get to one point, one time, I went to, in my office, there is a garden beside my office. And that garden beside my office, the owner of that garden, he sells drink and the builder and this um, all. So there are some church people that normally rent those all. So we are sitting down by then, drinking. The man of God now came. The servant of God now came that day. He said, ah, why are you people drinking here? And I told him that, oh God, you are not in position, in good position to ask me why are we drinking here. You should have asked the manager that gave you this, uh, this all. He's the one that sold this uh, drink to us also. Before I even finish my statement, I don't even know that my boys and the pastor boys, they have started giving conversation within themselves. That is how they started fighting. Before you know what is happening that day, May God have mercy on me. That day, what we did in that church that day, we beat, we beat them. We, in short, what we did then that day, we panic beat them very well, destroy them. So that very day, that man now placed a cost on us, more especially on me. And since then, it's like the kind of life that I'm living was so bad. After one year later, I've been so, to so many places, White Garments Church, Abalis, to make sure that I bring myself out of this bad habit. There was a time I traveled to one state, and they asked me that they will do the sacrifice for me. They are, they are going to kill one black goat, and they will still kill a fowl, that, but that fowl, I will be the one that will eat that fowl, finish it. And I've never eaten fowl in my life, I ate fowl. I said, well, as far as I'm the one looking for a solution, I have no any option. I have to eat the fowl. They prepare the fowl. I eat the fowl. He's a native doctor. They now call the old old man in that village because in that place, it's inside, inside big forest. There is an Iroko tree. They took me to that Iroko tree. They now conjure their, all their distance. That is how spirits, dead people, now came from nowhere. I saw them physically because... It may looking at those dead people, it's just small, small children that are now up to 12 years, 10 years. In their body, you will see them that they are spirits. They put on rag, all their faces, they came out. If you see them, it will be as if maybe you will just see them that they came out out of ground because all their hair, dust, rashes, their body everywhere. So when they now came out, on my way leaving that place, getting to Abuja, I've not even, went to, I've not even been in Abuja. I've now arrived in Abuja when I get to Kuali. 
That is where I now control my boys that they should bring one and a half gram. They should bring one gram for me. And I started, it now be as if maybe it's from fire to fry pan again. That is how my life. So, so the addiction to drugs became even worse. Yes, worse than the way it, it is before. Okay, and you said as a fighter, when, whenever you take these drugs and you get angry, what happens? Anytime you take the drugs as a fighter, I don't like to even listen to anybody. I like beat people. And anybody come across my way, in short, it will not like itself because if, if I beat someone, I don't like to beat one person, but if one person came my way, it will almost lead to death. That is how I'll be beating people, collecting blood from people, as in beat them. If I beat you, if you didn't have caught, I will not leave you. Or you faint, and I'll leave you. So that is how I've been behaving, doing anyhow. Okay, so we can understand, brethren, our brother is giving this confession about under the influence of these hard drugs, how Satan really used him and uh, the people, the, the boys around him, the touts, criminals, thugs who are following him really used, Satan really used them to cause havoc and destruction in so many lives. And brother, you mentioned about your marriage. Can you just explain how this uh, actually affected your marital life as well and your wife beside you? During all those periods, because anytime I'm into the drug, if I put on white now or maybe the way I dress now, if I'm going back home, I'd rather pull my, maybe I can go alone with my trouser. I will pull my shirt, put it inside the vehicle. I will not even know how to do. By the time I get home, I don't want to see my family. If they just say one word, I will took my car key. I will just get out until if the Muslim are calling their money prayer before I can enter my house. If I want to enter my house, it will be as if maybe there is a demon in the house. I can, I can go to my house now. Maybe a cabman will take me to my house maybe three times. If I get there, I will tell the cabman to turn again. If I get there, I will tell him to turn again because I know that all these things are not just ordinary. Okay, so because you are not staying in your house, where were the places you, you were going to to pass the nights? I will go to I will go to a club at times. I do lodge in hotel, four types of hotel in a day. And all this hotel, I pay 9000 12000 the lowest one, 7,000. I will just collect. If I collect hotel, I will not spend more than one hour. It will be as if maybe that hotel, maybe there is a demon inside that is chasing me. I will leave that hotel. I will go to another hotel. That is how I've been doing. And in that hotel room, I normally go with my friends. Maybe after smoking, I can, I may jam a female friend. Maybe in bunk, we will be together. We smoke together. And all these guys, they are all prostitutes. We smoke together, drink together, play together at the end of the day. I was just saying that my life was just going down, down, down. So basically you were living a life going from hotel to hotel, meeting prostitutes, and because of that you had no affection for your wife, you, you had abandoned your wife in the house. Yes, sir. That is how I've been doing. If, if it is not God, because I know that really she loves me, because the way, I be, the way I'm behaving, no kind of woman being a part of say woman that can even stay with me. Because the way I'm behaving, me by myself, I know that I'm not behaving normal. To the extent my brothers and sisters in home and abroad have been a blessing to them, and they don't want to even associate with me. I've sent most of them to abroad. They don't want to even hear my matter in, in their ears. They don't want to even see me due to the kind of life that I'm living. Okay, so we understand what our brother's saying now. For, for so many years, he's been under the bondage of this severe drug addiction, but we give glory to God. We saw that last week our brother came to the Synagogue Church of Nations. Just brother, how did you come to be in the Synagogue Church of Nations last week? Uh, it's, it's a friend of mine that introduced me to the Synagogue Church of All Nations. And when I came here last week to the glory of God, I'm opportune to, to meet the man of God when he was praying for people. He just saw me. I don't even know how he even speak Yoruba to me. That you, you don't want to join prayer line, prayer line. I was just scared. Huh? How this man understand that I'm a Yoruba, I understand Yoruba. That is how he now said, okay, I should wait him later on. He now called me and I stand up. When he called me, he now, one spirit in me now told me that ah, I should stay very well. That let me see if it is miracle that this man is using, this man of God is using. And I stand very well. I stand gallant. I put my hands. I stand very well. Let me see how it's going to be today. I fold my hand. 
from there. I couldn't know when. I just met myself on ground. Wow. When I met myself on ground. So you mean to say, brother, that's the, the first time ever you've fallen down like that? Yeah. That is the first time because when I'm inside the ring self, my mate has never defeated me one day in my life. I fought super heavyweight, but it was a magic that day. I know that is a magic spiritual from God. That is how I met myself on ground. And when I met myself on ground, it's like I met myself in a dark area. And I shout Jesus. When I shout Jesus, that is how I saw light. When I saw light, that is how. Well, let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. When I now saw light, I felt that something leave me. And since then, I've never been the same since then. God has done great, mighty things in my life. When I get back to Abuja, my boys, more especially those boys that are selling drugs, immediately they saw me, they know that, ah, this man traveled. At least there will be enough money in his accounts now. So they are now rushing me. They even came, so we bring one grand, so we bring half grand. That's how they are bringing it. One, one grand, half, half grand. They are chairman. Use this one. Just use this one to maintain yourself. And the Spirit of God told me that we should resist the Satan instantly and it shall feel away. That is how I now maintain my spirit. That is how I now maintain my spirit. I didn't say anything to them that maybe ah, I'm. I don't want to smoke again, this, that. I just told them that already, my brain is already filled up, that they should allow me first. So they also, they were surprised in the, ah, this man, he don't want to smoke. They sent some people to be monitoring me among them, that maybe his lie is a dream. The following day, the same thing. They will just be bringing the drugs, bringing the drugs, and my spirit, I don't even have urge to smoke, even cigarettes, even wee wee, even, even cocaine since then. Because before, before, if I went to any prayer, immediately, instantly, I finished the prayer. Unless if I didn't sight my eyes in that my area, in area one, Abuja, there. That is where I will not take drugs. If I thought Lagos, here, yeah, I know all the area that they are selling drugs. Everywhere, any state that I went to, I know all the area. As far as that is what I need in my life, I will look for it and I will get it. But since then, even to even have misunderstanding with someone, or maybe to even insult someone. God has removed all those kind of a thing in my life. Well, let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. So the brother, as you're standing here, you mean since the deliverance you received last week, you have not had any interest or urge to take drugs and you've not taken anything like that? By the grace of God, I've never had any urge to smoke again and I will never smoke it again, Jesus name. And, and since the deliverance, what are the changes you've seen in terms of your relationship to your wife? You know, that spirit of anger that you had before, what are the changes you've seen? Since I'm delivered, there is a great changes because I, I know that Satan at times during then, if I get inside my, my house, maybe my wife just, she just do maybe a small thing that is not even up to anger or quarreling. I will just change it for her. So since then, we are in peace, we are in love. I love her, she loves me. Everything is going fine. Even my son, even my son, all those periods that I'm doing anyhow, even my son, he don't like me. If the mother is angry, talking to me any other times, he also will join him. But since I get back, I'm delivered. There is a peace in that family, in short. There is a peace. If I'm going home, I will buy some kind things. I will call them. What do you want me to buy? They will tell me. If the other is not going, I will buy. I know how what I have gone through in my life. I've lost a lot of things in my life, of which I know that through the time of my deliverance, God has everything has been added abundantly to me. That's why I'm crying. It's, not, it's a cry of joy. It's a cry of joy. Well, let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ one more time. Indeed, as Prophet T.B. Joshua says, the evidence of Christ Jesus is lives changed. And our brother standing here is a real testimony to the power of deliverance that he received last week. And we give all the glory to God. The reason he's giving his confession is to the shame of the devil. 
and we believe there are many people watching right now who may also ha be passing through a similar addiction as they're hearing to his testimony right now. They too are being inspired to seek Jesus Christ and receive their own deliverance. My name is Blessing Akugwe. This man standing here is my husband and this is my son. All what he said is true. I've been married for eight years now, so we have not been staying at home. We have been taking drugs and moving around. Each time he comes back home, he always speak on Thorway. He always like, look for my problems that to have issues. So he will leave the house. He will go out. He will go out in the morning. He will come back the next day, sometimes in weeks. I won't see him. So we are living kind of different kind of life. Whenever he's even, after spending his money in his own account, if he's broke, he'll come inside the house. Whatever I see, he took it and go and sell it. So, but since uh, he came back, since he came to in my synagogue church of our nation, he's a changed person. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. Why do you say he's a changed person? What are the things you've seen? Before, every minute, he, maybe if I didn't see him taking drugs, he always take cigarettes at home. He always cut everything, don't even come at home at all. But since he came back from church, he's, he's a changed person entirely. He's, he don't used to live that kind of life again. He don't even smoke. I haven't seen him with any drink or smoke. Amen. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. We thank God. We salute our sister for her perseverance, for staying in this marriage despite all of the turmoil and the hardship she faced. I'm the father of the boy who has just spoken now. I am Idehan Gabriel by name. I'm an ex soldier. You see, the problem I have is a big problem. I beg you people to deliver me up. You see, I'm addicted to smoking. I smoke all type of cigarettes, all type of tobacco. The same thing with drink. I can't even drink acid. I don't bother to die. <laughs> then I have. I did that to a woman. Whether woman you old or whether you young, I am addicted to all. So, what I'm begging for, I want deliverance. I'm 74, 74 years. Uh, and when did you start taking all of these cigarettes, alcohol? I, I, it was four years. Because my mother left my father at the age of three years, when I was three years. So, after she left, I was somehow, um, I can't say how this was. So I have power to do anything I like as any. So I begin doing all this. So I be begging God to stop it. I'm unable to stop it. Okay, so we heard from our father. He's saying that right from the age of four, the tender age of four, he had actually started taking alcohol and smoking. And we believe that as our brother has received his deliverance. Our father too will receive his deliverance from this addiction through the prayer of Prophet T.B. Joshua in Jesus' name. I pray to God first, first of all that God should have mercy on me because during this drug issue of 18, he has led me to so many bad things. I pray to God that God should have mercy on me because taking drugs is not advisable. It destroys so many things in someone's lives. It's just by the grace of God I'm still here today, standing to testify the goodness of God upon my life. And I'm still advising all my members, if anybody is listening to me now, being a transporter, being a garage person doesn't mean that that is the end of our lives. At least we should know how to learn to follow the will of God. Because I believe that without God, anything beside is just a vanity upon vanity. That is my advice to every viewer. Hallelujah. Glory be to God Almighty. We've heard it from our brother. Vanity upon vanity. All is vanity. We thank God that our brother has now come into the light and has in a position to advise our views all over the world. Let's just hear one final word of advice from your wife as well. What is your own advice, madam, after all that you've passed through and the deliverance that your husband has now received? My advice to everybody is to have faith in God, no matter what situation that they are passing through. If God could be able to change a strong man from drug addicts, I believe that anybody here can be changed and be touched. Amen. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. 
So we thank God for this family. We pray that God will give you the grace to continue to maintain this deliverance by making the Word of God the standard for your life. And we know that this entire family will be back to share another wonderful testimony very soon to the glory of God in Jesus' name.